So we've got about 20 gallons of strip paint 9900 in this 55 gallon drum. It's uh, 10 gallons of strip paint 9900 and then 10 gallons of water. Uh, you're supposed to cut it 50 50. Uh, I moved it outside because the fumes are pretty gnarly. Uh, you know, if you're going to do it indoors, I would definitely wear a respirator, but honestly, I wouldn't do it indoors unless you have a really good uh, fume extraction system, which I do not have yet, so I'm moving it outside. Uh, I did one indoors last weekend, and uh, I regretted it, so <laughs> we're outdoors this weekend. I got the drum heater on here. Uh, it's a 2,000 watt drum heater. You can't see it because it's under the fiberglass. I, I wrapped the uh, barrel in R19 because my shop uh, has exactly the same temperature control as my driveway and uh, the fiberglass helps helps it heat up. Uh, I left a little cutout down there for the temperature adjusting knob. So we're gonna let this sit out here and uh, heat up for about an hour and then we're gonna throw in a couple of wheels. Just as a baseline, our product temperature is 44 degrees. Uh, I would expect in about an hour, it'll probably be over 100. Uh, I will say less than a minute ago, it was 43, there we go. Getting, just depends on where you're shooting, but right in the center, we're looking at 44, pretty much on the money. So we'll come back and check this in an hour. If it's heated up, we'll throw one of the wheels in. We're gonna do these wheels one at a time because with 20 gallons in the tank, uh, I could probably fit, well, I could fit one wheel for sure. Uh, if I put two in there, I'd have to flip the top one over, and I'd rather just do soak them one at a time. We're at 120, and uh, I think that's going to be good enough. We'll just stick it in there for a little longer. So we're going to get the wheel, and we'll get it dropped in. So I had powder coated these before. And as you can see, the, the finish is not very good. It's, it's not very good on this inside part. It's okay on the face. It's not, not great there either, to be honest with you. So uh, I decided I'm just going to strip them, and we'll try it again. Uh, I've got a new powder coating system since I painted these last. I painted these with the, um, the HyperSmooth uh, 3.0 LED. And I just got the Electron system, so I'm going to try using the electron which is really it's a professional system i'm just learning how to use it uh, and that's what motivated me to get the chemical stripping tank in the first place was these wheels and trying to learn how to do them so let's get these in there and uh and we'll get back fully submerged Throw the lid back on and uh and we'll let this uh simmer for uh i don't know i'm gonna give it an hour uh i'm only at 120 degrees i recommend 180 uh at, a, at 135 degrees i have completely stripped a wheel in 30 minutes we're a little cooler than that i'll give it an hour i have time this, this isn't a hurry project i just throw this on there to uh Give it a little bit more insulation on the top and we had some drizzle earlier so
there you have it. That was about uh, about an hour and a half of soak time in a 120 degree, 130 degree strip paint 9900. And keep in mind, it's also about 35 degrees outside right now, and I'm doing this outside, so that is definitely a factor. But I put zero scrub brush on that thing, and that's how it came out. Now you can see there's a couple of little tiny spots inside the, the lug nut holes, but that'll come right out with the sandblaster. So pretty awesome. Can't complain. Now, I'm glad I'm doing this, though, because it gives me a chance to clean up the curb rash on these wheels, too. But they're, they're actually in pretty decent shape for the most part. Anyway, that's my experience with Strip 8 9900. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but it's not as expensive as some of the other stuff out there either. So um, you can, I think, all together with my barrel, the chemical, the heater, the, uh, the spill pad that I got for it down here, I think all together it was like, I don't know, probably uh, right around 1000 Maybe it's a hair under a thousand, but right about a thousand. And uh, that was buying a brand new barrel from a, from a barrel manufacturer, uh, open top with the lock ring. Uh, that's the insulation, uh, the chemical, the chemical. So the setup I've got right now, I'm only using two five gallon buckets for 20 gallons altogether. Um, two five gallon buckets, about 600. I've got a third five, five gallon bucket inside. It's about 250. For each five gallon bucket roughly i got three of them i'm only using two the third one's just going to be for refreshing a tank when it needs it it's not cheap but as chemical stripping goes it's a pretty darn reasonable uh cost for a uh, for a chem stripping and dipping setup so i'll figure something a little bit better out in the in the springtime when it gets nicer outside uh, i'm not going to use this stuff indoors it's just a little too gnarly uh, even outdoors and, and we have an okay breeze today. It's not windy, but we have a, a, a light breeze uh, It's still a little bit much, but uh, it's not bad. I would wear, wear a respirator um, If I was making a recommendation to anybody get a good fume extraction hood uh, You might be able to do it with just a fume extraction hood, but me personally, I would do a respirator uh, Don't get it on your skin. Uh, I got some on my hands and a half hour later my fingers were feeling weird it wasn't burning but it just feels off so you know keep it off your skin uh, these are good uh rubber gloves or nitrile gloves I'm, i don't think these are nitrile actually these might be uh these might actually be latex but uh, as you can see they're not satisfactory you're going to need some proper rubber chemical resistant gloves so big thumbs up from me and uh, I hope if you guys try this out, you have the same luck I did. Uh, heat is critical and time is critical. So those two things are kind of your determining factors on stripping as best I can tell. Uh, the cooler your tank is, the longer it's going to take to strip. I don't know if it'll do it at room temperature, 70 degrees. I'm sure it would, given long enough. But at 120, it took me about an hour and a half. At 135, it took me 30 minutes. So as you can see, there's a substantial drop off when you start to get lower and lower in temperature. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you guys learned something. I hope uh, anybody is interested in doing this uh, got some pointers that'll be helpful. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time in Galt Garage.